Welcome to the Depth Dive. This week, we're diving deep um, into the mind of a legend, Bruce Lee. Okay. We're going to be uh, looking at excerpts from his book, Tao of Jeet Kune Do, and we're going to uncover how uh, his philosophy goes way beyond just martial arts, you know, and, and it offers some really valuable lessons for navigating really any challenge in life. Yeah, his insights are really relevant even now, you know, all these years later. It's amazing, right? So uh, the excerpt starts with this really interesting story about, get this, a swordsman who catches flies with chopsticks. Wow. Yeah, it mm. sounds kind of like a magic trick or something. But Lee uses it to make this really profound point, you know? What do you think about that story? I think it's um, it's such a clever way to sort of highlight the Eastern philosophical ideas behind martial arts. You know, mm -hmm. it's not just about being physically strong. You know, it's about uh, mental discipline, like really sharp focus and um, mastering your inner self. You know, mm -hmm. the fact that this swordsman can do this like seemingly simple thing really shows like a deeper mastery, yeah, yeah. a wholeness that comes out in everything they do. It's almost like like that mastery like goes into every little thing they do. It's just fascinating how they could tell just from watching him do that. Yeah. So one thing I find really interesting is how Lee um, compares this to like the Western view of martial arts, you know? Exactly, yeah. Like how we see it. He, he points out that, uh, you know, well, a lot of people in the West, they see fighting as like mainly a way to destroy things you know right eastern philosophy sees it more as a way to like overcome obstacles inside yourself i see it's like battling your own inner demons your fears your insecurities you know your limiting beliefs yeah it's not um, about the actual physical fighting it's about that struggle to master yourself exactly and that's where he brings in this idea of the um stickiness of the mind yeah which, I mean, it sounds kind of weird at first, yeah. but it's a really powerful idea when you think about it. Can you um, can you talk more about what Lee means by stickiness? Sure. So, like, imagine you're facing a tough situation, right? Like, maybe you have to give a big presentation at work or you have to have this, like, really difficult conversation with someone. Yeah. And uh, fear kicks in. And then your mind starts going in circles, like, full of doubt. Right. And you yeah. just freeze up. You get all rigid. You can't think straight and you don't know how to react in a good way. Yeah. And that's basically what stickiness is, right? It's when our minds get so focused on a problem, we can't be flexible anymore. Can't adapt. We've all been there. Right? Totally. It's like you're like trapped in your own head I and mean, you like you can't see a way out. Exactly. And to show this whole stickiness thing, Lee uses this um this powerful image the goddess Quan Yin with a thousand arms. Right. I mean, that's a lot of arms. Yeah, and he's saying like Having a thousand arms doesn't matter if your mind is stuck on using just one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like Lee's using this really vivid picture to show how important it is to be fluid and adaptable. It's about uh, developing a mind that can move easily between different approaches, just like Quan Yin, you know. Instead of getting stuck in one way of thinking, we have to be able to change our approach depending on what's going on. So it's not about having all the answers, but about being adaptable and open to different perspectives. But how do we actually get this unstuck mind? Because Lee uses terms like purposelessness and empty-mindedness, which, to be honest, sound kind of intimidating. Right, right. Don't worry. It's not as mysterious as it sounds. Okay, good. It's not like you have to completely empty your mind, but more about letting go of that rigid thinking, mm -hmm. you know, clearing out all that clutter that stops you from seeing things clearly. So it's not about like zoning out, it's about being mentally clear. Exactly. Lee's really emphasizing how important it is to get rid of all those preconceived notions and fears and desires that, you know, cloud our judgment. I see. It's about being present, being responsive, just like that swordsman catching flies. It's about being in the moment and just reacting with a clear mind, not letting all our preconceptions get in the way, almost like meditation in a way. This mental clarity is key for self-mastery, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. For Lee, self-mastery wasn't just about being physically strong, you know. Mm -hmm. It was about reaching this state of calmness, awareness, being in tune with yourself and everything around you. Yeah. He really believed that only then could you face any situation with clarity and purpose. So it's about mastering yourself first, your emotions, how you react to things, and then taking that mastery and using it for any challenge that comes up. 
which makes me think about how this idea of self-mastery connects to his idea of being like water. Exactly. That's actually one of Lee's most famous metaphors. That's one of Lee's most famous metaphors, like be like water. Right? Yeah. But uh, what does that even mean like in real life? Yeah, it's about like really embodying how adaptable water is. You know, okay. hmm. think about it. Water can be this calm, gentle stream or it can be this like powerful wave, right? Mm -hmm. It can cut through rock or it can like help a tiny little flower grow. It always changes to fit whatever's holding it. Mm -hmm. You know, it finds a way around or even through like anything in its way. So it's about being um, being flexible, right? And right. adaptable, not like stiff and stubborn. Exactly. When we hold on too tightly to like our plans or our ideas about how things should be, mm -hmm. you know, we're actually limiting ourselves. We can't really deal with those unexpected things that life throws at us. Right. We get stuck, just like we were talking about before. Exactly. But if we can develop that like water kind of thinking, yeah, know, we can handle challenges more easily and we can bounce back better. That like really hits home for me. I can think of so many times when I just kept pushing forward with a plan, even when it was obvious I needed to change. Yeah, we've all been there. But imagine approaching those situations with a more fluid mindset you know mm. like what if instead of fighting against change you just went with it right what if instead of being fixated on a specific result you just let the situation guide you okay that's the power of being like water you know so how do we actually like develop this like water mindset like in our everyday lives it all starts with awareness yeah you know pay attention to those moments when you start to feel yourself getting sticky when like fear or doubt creeps in or you're stuck in a certain way of thinking. Right, yeah. Recognize those patterns, those habits you have. Mm -hmm. Once you can see them, you can start to loosen their hold on you. It's about catching yourself in those moments and choosing a different way to react. Yes. And just like with martial arts, it takes practice. It's not a one-time thing. You know, mm -hmm. it's a continuous journey of like figuring yourself out and getting better. It's a journey, not a destination, right? Exactly. So like in a practical sense, how can we apply this? Say you're dealing with a tough situation at work, right? How can you be more like water in that moment? First things first, take a deep breath, give yourself some space to just observe the situation, uh -huh. you know, without immediately reacting. Ask yourself, okay, what's going on here? Yeah. What are the different ways of looking at this? Don't just cling to that first reaction you have. Let yourself consider other approaches. So it's about being present in the moment, being adaptable, and being open to different solutions, right? Exactly. And don't be afraid to change your approach if you need to. Like water, you can be both yielding and persistent, you know? You can find a way to flow around obstacles without, like, losing sight of what you're trying to achieve. This really changes things, doesn't it? It's not about forcing things to go our way, but about adapting and responding in a way that's both clear and purposeful, which makes me think about how often we try to control everything and how often that blows up in our faces. Absolutely. Lee truly believed that true mastery comes from surrendering to the present moment, you know, to the ever-changing nature of like life itself. It's about accepting uncertainty and adapting to whatever comes your way, just like water. Which brings us back to the concept of self-mastery, right? It's not about controlling the things around us, but mastering what's inside us, our thoughts, our emotions, our reactions. Precisely. And this inner work, this process of cultivating a fluid and adaptable mind, that's what lets us truly express ourselves and our potential. Yeah. It's about becoming the best versions of ourselves in every single part of our lives. So it's not just about being better at our jobs or in our relationships. It's about becoming like more fully ourselves, right? Exactly. It's about living with more awareness, yeah. more purpose, more freedom. And that's got to be a journey worth taking, right? Absolutely. This has been incredibly insightful. But um, before we wrap up, I'm really curious to hear your take on one more thing. This has been incredibly insightful. Lee talks about how important purposelessness is for achieving mastery. Right. Seems kind of contradictory, you know? How can yeah. you master something if you don't even have a goal? It's a really interesting idea, right? Yeah. But Lee wasn't saying we should just abandon all our goals, you know? He was actually pointing out how dangerous it can be to get too attached to a specific outcome. Like, when we cling too tightly to how we want things to turn out, right. we actually create this inner resistance, yeah. you know, and it limits our ability to adapt and respond effectively. So it's about, like, letting go of the need to control the outcome yeah. and just being present in the process. Exactly. It's about approaching things with a beginner's mind, being open to possibilities, mm -hmm. you know, and willing to adjust as we go along. Think of it like a musician who's so focused on hitting the perfect note 
they lose the feel of the music. Right, yeah. They might play perfectly technically, Right. But there's no soul in it anymore. That's a great way to put it. So it's not about being aimless, but about not being so fixated on the result. And that actually allows for more creativity and adaptability. Precisely. When we can let go of those rigid expectations, yeah. we open ourselves up to a whole world of possibilities that we might have never even considered. This has given me so much to think about. Lee's philosophy is really deep and complex. It's amazing how his ideas from martial arts fit so well into everyday life. It really speaks to his wisdom, you know, and his ability to connect with what it means to be human. He understood that the challenges we face, whether it's in martial arts or in our daily lives, they all come from the same place, our own minds. And if we can master our minds, we can master anything that comes our way. It's about knowing ourselves, being adaptable, and letting go of the need to control everything. It's about becoming like water, flowing around those obstacles, and finding our own path to mastery. Beautifully said. Lee's message is just as relevant today as it was all those years ago. It's a call to action an invitation to start this journey of self-discovery and unlock our full potential. It's a journey I'm definitely inspired to keep going on. Thanks for guiding us through all these amazing insights. I think we could all use a little more be like water in our lives, right? Absolutely. It's a real pleasure. Thanks so much for watching. We spend a lot of time putting these videos together. So if you like what you saw, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and give this video a like and a share to anybody you think might like it. And if you have any thoughts or suggestions on the video, go ahead and leave a comment. We make sure to read them all. Thanks, and see you next time.